This is question nine from paper one two from the June 2020 set of exams put on by Cambridge International Education. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it yourself before looking at my solution. Now, in this type of question, it's, it's a horrible question that students hate, be, mainly because teachers aren't good at explaining it. I'm not good at explaining it, I'd say, probably. But that's because if you know how to do this question, it's very easy and straightforward. If you don't know, it's very hard to follow someone telling you how to do it. So in this question, I'm going to try and do step by step drawer every step I'm doing because it's a very visual question. That's why in the question I actually gave you a little bit of a drawing and um, which is the answer, part, part of an answer that I'm going to derive now. So I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to do it from the very beginning because they ask me to, the first question is basically find the range of F and the range of G. Now to do that I usually draw a picture. Now they've already drawn a picture for me but I'm going to do it from scratch. So let's start off with F. Now we have to start with F because G is made up of F. We need F to make G. So let's start with F. Now I look at this, I understand the number two. Sine is the harder bit. So let's do this in steps. Uh, I'm gonna mark out some of the board because it's gonna be lots of pictures. I'm gonna have to use the board two or three times, I think. Um, starting off, let's look at sine. Sine X, that's something I understand a lot. Between, they're only asking us to go between zero and pi. So that's what sine looks like. It continues on. It continues on. Um, but that's what sine looks like between zero and pi. It, it never goes below zero. Like these aren't, doesn't finish here. It stops here at pi. And it goes up to one. All right, I understand sine pi. But I'm not interested in sine. I'm interested in sine 2x. So let's look at sine 2x. Uh, let's try and draw that one. Uh, so we'll start with this. X, when the x is 0, it looks like this. 2 times 0. Still there. Let's see what the middle bit is here. Pi over 2. Um, when Let's go to uh, pi over 2. When x is pi over 2, 2 multiplied by... This is 90 degrees, by the way. 2 multiplied by 90 degrees is 180. 2 multiplied by pi over 2 is pi. So at this point, we'll actually have 0 again, because we know what sine pi is. Uh, what about this point here? That's like pi over 4. 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. So at this point, we'll actually have something like this. Um, and we'll, we can sort of see what the shape it makes then. Uh, let's see, what about at... Um, at pi itself. 2 times pi is 2 pi. Well, we'll have to go over here for that answer. That's going to be 0 again. Let me line this up a little bit better. So there's pi here. And it really just stays going down like this. Looks like it gets squashed. That's what multiplying by 2 inside the x part, inside the sine, looks like. So that's uh, something you need to get a little used to. It just gets squashed or pulled apart, depending on whether it's bigger or less than one, the number in here. But this still, the highest it goes is one, the lowest it goes is minus one. So now I understand this part. And again, that's how we do these sort of questions. You need to understand this part first. You need to then understand this part. And we're gonna stay stepping down on this one. Uh, let's see, the next thing, we're not interested in sine two pi, two x, we're interested in three times sine 2x. So what does that look like? If I multiply 0 by 3, I get 0. If I multiply 1 by 3, I get 3. So this guy is now up here at 3. It's actually, and if we go through every step, I, I don't want to bore you by multiplying every number. Half by 3 gets whatever. 0 by 3, 0 by 3. But it will, we'll get the same shape out here. Except it won't be 1 up here, it'll be 3. It won't be minus one, it'll be minus three. That's what happens when we multiply something by three. Again, this is a much more common one. This, I believe this is a frequency, this number, this is amplitude. I'm not sure on that. Again, we're not actually, we're not actually interested in three sine two x. We're interested in minus three sine two x. So what does that look like? Uh, let's see, zero multiplied by a minus is still zero. Plus 3 multiplied by minus is actually minus 3. 
Uh, this guy by minus will get here. This guy will get here. This guy will be here. Zero will be zero. Um, instead of minus three, it'll be plus three. We'll get this shape. This is pi again, and this is still between three and minus three. Again, they didn't ask us about minus three sine two x. They asked us two. I could write this as two plus minus, by the way, just, just to be clear. So they asked us this plus two. So let's add two onto everything here, and we'll get our final picture, the picture they actually gave us in the question. Uh, we'll have two minus uh, three times sine two x. Let's see. Uh, two plus zero, we'll get a two. And um, two plus the minus three, we'll, we'll still get, uh, we'll get, uh, yeah, we'll get minus one. Let's put it, what have I got? I put this as two, have I? Let's add, put two up a little. No, I can't really put it up much more. And uh, minus one, two, be here. We're gonna get this shape. Um, zero plus two, we'll get here. We're gonna get this shape. Three plus two, we'll stay getting this uh, shape here. And um, three plus two is five. So that's uh, what that will look like. That's the drawing they actually gave us. This is pi. So now why did I do that then if they already gave us this drawing? They never give us these numbers. But that's where I got these numbers from, understanding this shape. I didn't have to use any maths, I drew it all out. Now I can do it quite quickly in my head because I'm, I have a lot of practice in this. And you will as well after a lot of practice, but you can quickly go through this. Basically reading this, what it tells me is, I know three sine goes between uh, minus three and three, three sine. And adding two to it just moves everybody up two. Everyone just gets moved up two. So very quick, just looking at this, I would know that it goes between um, minus three plus two, which is minus one, and plus three plus two, which is five. So the answer to the uh, range, range um, of fx is equal to, and I'd write it like this, minus one, that is the range of fx. Now they also asked us the range of gx. So let's continue this drawing on. Um, maybe I'll need to rub out some here. Um, maybe I'll have room here. So gx, they, want, they don't want the fx, they want two times it. So let me, yeah, I need two more drawings, so I might run out of room. Uh, they, I don't want the fx, I want two times fx. I know I want minus two, by the way. I'm just gonna do two first. So not fx, two times fx. So not two, four, not five, uh, so not minus one first, not minus one, I want minus two. And not, well zero is still zero. And not, this guy here is at two, I want four again. So that's still there. Not five, that guy's gonna be at 10 here. So I actually didn't change the shape too much. I stretched it out. It's not easy to see there, but it's actually much more stretched out. Um, yeah, I'll just go quickly draw those two beside each other. Uh, beside each other would look much more like this. Instead of this shape, it's this shape. It got stretched out a lot more than originally. These numbers are fine though, but you can probably see the numbers don't make sense. That's two, that's 10. So my drawing is pretty bad. So it looks more like that one there. Um, but again, they didn't want two FX. They wanted minus two fx. And we already looked what happens when we multiply by minus. It just goes upside down. It's not 4, it becomes minus 4. It's not minus 2, it becomes uh, plus, yeah, plus 2, minus 4, and then instead of going up, it goes down, little bend on my board, and it goes like that. So it, it ends at not 4, minus 4. It, the, the highest here is 10, the lowest is minus 10. So that's what GX looks like. This one here is equal to GX. So again, the range of GX, again, I'm just looking the highest and lowest that goes, the range is between minus 10 and two. That is the range of GX. Actually, I fit it all on one board. Maybe I needed more. You can see what I mean, I needed more room. I, I would have loved one long board and put all of these underneath each other because they all have the same length. They all go to 
pi. They all go to pi. Now, I do all of this in my head. You could get full marks in this question by answering, just writing this down and writing this down with no work. Absolutely no work. Your examiner might be a little suspicious, so I would add in a little bit here and there. But except for drawing things out, like I might, I might start with this picture and then jump to this picture. Well, I'd probably start here, yeah, this one to this one to this one, all the way to this one. I'd leave out middle bits, but you would get full marks by just writing these two numbers out. Because it, it shows you must have, must have understood it all. Okay, so that's part A. Uh, I'll need to rub some work out before we get into part B. Or never mind, after reading the question a little closer, um, part B is just graph GX and put it on top of FX. So here's FX. Here's the picture they would have given us. They want us to draw this onto it. Uh, I don't have enough room here, but it would look something like, uh, oh, I, yeah, it would look, no, I don't have enough room here. It would come up like this, come down all the way off the screen and back, well, not off the screen, but a good bit down. It would look something like that on top of each other like that. That's why they gave you that drawing. They just want you to sketch over. It doesn't have to be too accurate. Just make sure you put in all these numbers they need. Put in minus. First of all, the picture they gave you, put the numbers they're missing. Put two in. Put five in. Put minus one. When you're, putting, when you're drawing GX, make sure the highest point is around where the two is. Make sure the, the starting point is at minus four. Or just put in the number minus four. Um, and then it goes down to minus ten. Okay, reading uh, part C, I, I want a lot of these pictures here. So I'm just gonna rub out this one. Yeah, I'll rub out this one here and uh, write down the quite part C. So part C tells us that HX is equal to GX plus pi. And all they want us to do, and it's a really hard one. A lot of students would have got this wrong because they didn't know how to answer it. And they wanted us to describe how we get from FX all the way to hx what kind of sh what kind of manipulations and shapes and pulling and pulling and moving i would have to do to get from the shape fx to hx um actually no i need more room than this so give me a moment i'll rub let's see i want this picture which i've made a mess of and i want this picture down the bottom here so let me just clear out this space here and we'll find out how to get hx first and then we'll show you how to move between them Okay, what I've done is I've actually answered part B again here with just better drawing all on top of each other. Here is F, I should have used two different colors. Here is FX here and here is GX here. Now, part C, they want this HX. HX, let me write that again. HX is equal to GX plus pi. Not, sorry, not GX plus pi, G of X plus pi. So that's inside the bracket a bit of a difference and this is actually between um minus pi and zero so they don't want to, they want x is basically minus minus it starts at minus pi then it's minus uh, pi over two then it goes all the way up to zero and um, so let's uh, well let's just try and draw it here's gx again here on a separate drawing and um, what happens if i put minus pi in here minus so let's uh have this drawing here. Minus pi is here, zero is here. So let's put mi minus pi, let's put minus pi into gx. Minus pi plus pi is zero. So what's g of zero? Well, here's g up here. So g of zero will give minus four. Let me put these numbers back in, minus 10 and two. So g of zero will give minus four. So if I put in, Minus pi, I get minus four here. Um, let's uh, pick a halfway point. How about pi over two? Minus pi over two plus pi is again pi over two. If I put pi over two in, I get minus four as well. And if I put zero in, zero plus pi is pi. Uh, G of pi, again, is minus four. We get these three points. Let's look at some of the halfway points here. Pi well, halfway between here is minus three pi over four, okay? You don't have to do all this, by the way. If you have a better understanding, this is much quicker. Uh, but if I put this number in here, I will get pi over four. P 
pi over 4 will give me 2. So this number, uh, bad drawing, but it'll give me 2. Ah, can't put it up that high. Will give me, let me clean some of this away. Let's see. Put it underneath here. Minus 3 over 4 pi. So we'll get 2 here. So it'll actually look like this shape. And it will go down, down here. Look like this shape. So where will it go down to? Well, it'll go down to minus 10. Just like everything else was the same as this guy. 2 minus 4. If we check, double checked, it will come down to minus 10. And this is what it looks like. This is what H looks like. Hx. That's gx and that there is fx. So the final answer, the thing that most students didn't know how to do, a lot of them got this wrong I believe and the other thing they didn't know how to do is describe how we start with fx and get to hx. There's many answers. You can actually just literally say what, what kind of shape changes will this go to this. A lot of students were able to wing it, so I guess some probably did fine. So how do we get from this? Let's just do what we did on the board. How do we get from fx to gx? So first thing I did to this is I multiplied it by 2. I stretched it out by 2. So let's see, fx, we went to 2fx, and we what did we do there? Describe what we did there. We stretched it in the y direction. We stretch uh, how do I spell stretch? That's close enough. Stretch by a factor of 2, by a factor of 2 in y direction. And there's lots of ways to write this. Don't get too worried about getting exactly what I wrote. Instead of stretch, you could say pull. Um, instead of by a factor of 2, you could say times 2. You could say double. Instead of y direction, you could just say up and down. If you want, the examiner is not going to be too mean to you on that. What they're looking for is some sort of word for stretching and two, really, and the direction y. This would be perfectly fine though. And then, not only do we stretch it by two, you have to go back in the video, but we multiply it by a minus then. Yeah, I wish I had all those drawings still here because we got from two fx, we went to minus two fx, by multiplying by a minus. What did that do? It Instead of having a 2, we had a minus 2. Instead of having a... Um, well, it wasn't a 2 because we'd already stretched it. Crap. Instead of a 4, it was a minus 4. Instead of a minus 2, it was a plus 2. What we're really doing there is we're, rot we're reflecting. Every number here just came down. Every number here came down. They just... Came, yeah, let me draw it separately here somewhere. Um, let's say it was like this. This number came down here. This number came up here. This number came down here. The zeros all said the same. This one came up here. It reflected in the x-axis. So that's what that's exactly what we call that. Reflect um, in in x in x-axis. Uh, Something like that. Again, other words, uh, a mirror through the x-axis. There's even other ways to have done it. There's We could have um, simply reflected it in in the four, it was, I believe. It reflected it in the four space. In the four, in um, y equals four. It was up here. It reflected in y equals four and then translate it down. But still, this one's, let me stay on this one simple way. First of all, we stretched it by two. Then we reflected it through the x-axis and boom we got there uh, that's equal to gx we got equal to gx how did we get from gx to hx well this one's actually quite easy we just moved it to the left so gx goes to hx and we say translate but move is perfect i'll write move in in fact it's perfectly fine move we usually say um in the x-axis we, we might say we moved it minus pi. Instead of zero, it was minus pi. Instead of pi, it was zero. We moved it minus pi in the x-axis. But another way, I'll write this one a lot simpler. I would say we move left um, by pi. Because that's what we did. We moved the left by pi. Or you could say we moved the right by minus pi. Just hopefully that doesn't confuse you. But um, we moved it minus pi in the x direction. X is this way. Minus pi in the x direction. Or just move the left by pi. 
or we translated it minus pi in the x direction. Lots of ways to write it. The examiner is really just looking for a few of these key words. They're going to be actually quite generous on this, especially with the English. They're really just looking for the idea. If you got all the rest of the question, they're going to help you out on this part. If you didn't get other parts, they're not going to help you too much because they know you probably don't understand it too well. Okay, hopefully that helped somewhat, but I'm sure you have follow-up questions. Comments below are the perfect place for them. Put some questions there. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, hopefully we'll get through them. I might have to do a whole new video to clarify some things. Who knows? Hopefully I'll hear from you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.